Okay, welcome. This is What's in a Name, proper documentation and citation for heraldic name submissions as taught by myself, Lady Lily Du, Inge Noy Mur. Uh, this is based upon a class originally taught by Alice McIntosh. Um, this is useful for consulting heralds as well as submissions heralds. It will go over how to properly summarize different types of documentation so that when uh, Oscar commenters need to review it, it will be uh, easily uh, dealt with. Um, there is a class handout. Uh, please have the class handout open. You'll need it for reference. There's a, a URL. Uh, it should be in PDF form you can, you can get to. So uh, I am going to start my presentation. Okay, can everybody see that? Okay, first of all, um, all right, I can see, all right, I can see most of you. Uh, just as a quick question, uh, who here has done a name consult? If you would uh, just raise your hand a little bit. Okay. And who has uh, an Oscar account? that they use. Okay. So at least I have that. Okay. So, and you have, uh, I'm going to give you a couple of minutes to, to get the class handout put together. So, okay. Um, all right. So, yeah, hold on. There we go. Okay. Now, first of all, where are you putting these summaries? Well, right there, where the blue arrow sits. When you want to write up a uh, summary of name elements, that's where eventually it's going to go onto the submission form. Uh, it should be uh, reasonably short. It should be reasonably succinct, and we're going to go over uh, what elements do you need to have a good and proper summary? So, why do you have to summarize your documentation? Why don't you just, you know, write it all out? Well, correct summaries and citation um, allow for several things. They allow for the Kingdom submissions people to uh, accurately put the entries into OSCAR. And uh, it allows for commenters to easily verify and document, uh, uh, double check, excuse me, your documentation. Insufficient summaries uh, can cause delays and errors. So let's try to avoid that as much as possible. So documenting a historic name. At the top, this is the basic uh, layout for a name documentation. The name is a doesn't you don't have to use the gender if you don't want to, but uh, it does help with grammar at some points uh, from a language, the type of name it is, whether it's a given name or a type of by name found in whatever source you found it in, uh, with the author if it's necessary, dated to whatever date uh, or dates the name is found in, and if there's a URL for the source, you must include that. So, and then is there a pattern for the name uh, that you need to, uh, you need to also do? And we'll, we'll talk more about that. As an example, client wants the name Lucy Love. English name, time doesn't matter, but the spelling of the given name is a must. Documentation. Lucy is a feminine English given name found in names from early English wills by Sarah L. Uckelman dated to 1411 in that spelling with the URL. Easy, simple, and it gives all the information necessary. 
and then love is an English by name found in Rini and Wilson, which is a book. SN, which means subnomine, it's a Latin term meaning under the name. Uh, the SCA uses that uh, to refer to the uh, main form of the name found in the book. Um, and it says, with the spelling dated to 1346 in the example of Martin Love. So if I open this book and that's what I find, perfectly good summary information. And then we have, oops, hold on. Sorry about that. Uh, and then it says, according to Senna Appendix A, given plus by name is acceptable across all SCA time periods in English. That's kind of a little bit of an extra. Um, it's a good extra to have in a summary, um, especially if you have something more complex. But this is a good basic uh, name summary. Okay. Now, constructing a name uh, is a special case. Sometimes you have people who want uh, a name from, say, Norse um, that isn't a historical name, but we can put pieces of it together. Um, you need three examples of each part of the name. Uh, the proto-theme, which is the first part of the name, the duo-theme, which is the second part, cite the source correctly for the example, and then ensure all parts are dated as close as possible in the SE period. What do I mean by this? Client wants the name Igrim. It's Norse, it's a Viking age, and the sound is important. He wants Igrim. Well, we can't find Igrim as a name, but we can find the two bits of the name. So we can write that up. We can construct the name out of the protosem I found in Ijar, Ilog, Ivind, in Girbasi, which is one of the Viking sources that we have, and the duo theme Grim, found in the names Elisegrim, Halagrim, Steingrim. GB is a shorthand for Girbasi. We can do that. And then we believe the submitted name is a valid construction based on this evidence. So if you're constructing a name, Norse is one of the, one of the languages you can construct names in. Uh, Japanese is another. Uh, and you can also construct um, locations in English from different, uh, different elements. Uh, and that's also in your handout. So. Uh, up until now, are there any questions? No? No questions. Okay. So we're going to go on a little bit. So how do you cite the different types of um, information that you get? Is it in a book? Is it an online? Is it, um, is it from a different type of source? So we're going to go over the different sources, uh, and I'm going to basically do the three main types. I'm going to do books, uh, online articles, uh, websites, uh, St. Gabriel, and then I'm also going to talk about Family Search, which I know is a uh, popular site to use. So books. Um, for a full citation with a modern book, uh, please try to provide the uh, image or the copy of pages from the book. It does make things easier, even if you have a URL that will lead to it. Uh, having the information in the image makes it just that much easier to look at. But how do you write it? So you have the name, what it is, where it's found, the author, and the pages. And for a modern book, um, when you get to the actual site, and I'm going to open this now. Let's see if it'll come up. Go 
go. Okay, can everybody see that? Okay. Here's the site from the book. Earliest, and it says, recorded on a papyrus in Egypt, which gives the names of two soldiers in service in the year 90. Perfect. We have the name and we have a, a date. Oop. That go away. Ack! Hold on. Sorry. I hit the wrong thing. I'm gonna stop the share for just a moment. Okay. Oh, let me just get this. Okay, sorry about that. I hit the wrong thing. Okay. Um, so we so we've gone over uh, a full modern book citation. What you need now we have common sources. Now we have a, what's called a no photocopy list in the admin handbook. It's uh, Appendix H. And there's a whole list of books that are uh, in common use that we know of um, that we can use, but how do you cite it? So here's an example. Grace is an English by name found in R&W, which is shorthand for a dictionary of English surnames by Rini and Wilson. Uh, SN, again, that subnomine under the, the name of Grace, with the requested spelling dated to 1296 in the example of Gilbert Grace. Having the date and an actual um, name from that date is what you need for that particular book. And there are other books that, uh, that function the same way. You're looking for the period spelling and a date. Um, does anybody have any uh, queries about that particular type of um, source? I'm trying to find the, the chat. Hold on. Screen. At the bottom of the screen, there's a little uh, speech bubble that says chat. You can click on that and it'll come up. As a window. Okay, I'm trying to I'm trying to put on. It's not coming up. Hold on. Oh. Speaker view. That's okay. Um, if you'd like, I can read out the questions for you. It, yes, please. Would you, Frida? Yep. Um, we we have one question uh, from Patricia. Uh, she wants to know how often does the no photocopy list change? I don't think it's changed in quite some time. Um, if you look at it and see that there's something missing uh, or uh, there's a source that you don't think is good anymore, you can certainly talk to the, the sovereigns about it, but um, that, uh, that is out of, uh, out, of my, out of my purview right now. Yeah, I can, I can speak to that. I oh. did a big change in 2018, allowing a lot of websites that had not previously been no photocopy to be no photocopy. Um, to the extent changes are made going forward, they're more likely to be websites than Rather books. Than books. Okay. Uh, just for context, could you tell us who you are, disembodied voice? Oh, I'm sorry. I thought I had a... Hi, I'm 
Al Mistress Alice McIntosh, Republican Queen of Arms. Thank you, Mistress Alice. Okay. And the third type of book, to go back to what we were doing, the third type of book is a primary source. Um, again, even if you have a URL, uh, try to provide an image, it does, it does help. So we have a primary source for the uh, given name of Giovanni, found in that spelling in big long name by another big long name, published 1544. So we have the published in period um, requisite so that anything that was that's within this book that shows the name we know is in period. And again, here's the, the URL and I'm, and I'm not going to I'm not going to click on it uh, now. So that's the three types of books. Um, there, uh, there might be other types that you find uh, or uh, pamphlets that uh, appear in book form. But in general, this is, the, uh, this, is, this is the forms that you're looking for when you're citing a book. Uh, and now we're going to talk about uh, articles on the web, websites, and um, uh, St. Gabriel reports as well. So we have uh, a lot of articles appear on the SCA Heraldry website um, by, and they're all by various Gadians. So when you're citing them, you're citing the name of the uh, article, the author by their Scadian name, and any particular information about where it appears in the article. Um, take uh, take here. We have the uh, we have the by name Lippicott. Uh, what it is? It's a French name. Where it's found? An index to the given names in the 1292 Census of Paris by Lord Condu. As the full name Renault Lippicart under the letter R. So when we pull up the actual uh, URL to, to verify it, um, we know exactly where to look for it. Now, you heard me say that you need the dates for the name. Well, this particular site has the date right in the title of the article. Um, so it isn't really necessary to, uh, to restate a date. Sort of the same thing in the second, uh, in the second example. Uh, we have an Italian by name found in an, in an article called Surnames from a 16th century Italian armorial um, by Codliffe Moonleth on his private website. Now, there are a few private websites uh, that are known to the SCA that have really good information on them, but um, you don't have to provide like a ton of, uh, a ton of information. Good, succinct summaries uh, are a lot easier to read and they provide the information needed. There's, uh, there's no extraneous information given. It's just a good, solid, here's what you need to know. Um, for a general website, such as uh, something from the Viking Answer Lady, um, real basic. Viet is a masculine, Old Norse given name found on the Viking Answer Lady website, and then you, and then again the URL. Generally known website, um, really good information, succinct and simple. Um, you might want to add um, something uh, extra if there's um, if there's more 
that the submitter particularly wants, but um, this is a good, solid, succinct. And then, and then we have the, the Academy of St. Gabriel's reports. This is sort of a special case because you do have to say what the report uh, is telling us about the name, uh, when it's dated to, and um, where it appears and how. So we have the example of um, Gabriel is a masculine given name discussed in St. Gabriel, give the report number, which says the given name Gabriel, wait, sorry, sorry, is found, oh, I've got to, sorry about that, is found uh, in England as early as the 12th century. And it says here, Gabriel, a little 1199. Gabriel Phileas Reginaldi in 1212 and Gabriel Spig in 1296. And then again, the URL. Um, for St. Gabriel reports, you always want to show the spelling of the name and the dating of it. Um, but as short and as succinct as possible, don't put the whole report uh, in. And uh, just as a, uh, as a quick um, thing, if you as a consultant or as a submission herald get something that's written up uh, with this whole wall of text, you don't necessarily have to use that whole wall of text in Oscar. Try to condense it down to something like this where it's uh, easily understood and um, no, uh, no extraneous information is given. Uh, that's, the, uh, that's the goal of a summary, succinct and to the point. Now, the next bit I'm gonna talk about is the family search record site. Um, this is a very special case. Um, and it is used pretty much universally across the SCA to document names at this point. But there are some differences that, um, that you need to know as far as doing a summary on names from that site. So, uh, okay, so who here has uh, used family search to look up names? Okay, so a few of you. Uh, who here doesn't know what family search is? Okay, so we know it's a uh, it's a website. The SCA has used it for several years now. Um, writing up a citation for a name from the site very simple. The name again gender, yes or no, you don't have to put that in. Um, it depends on what the submitter actually wants, what the event is for the name, the date, again, you always have to have the date, batch number, must have the batch number and then uh, the URL. Example, Cobley is an English by name found in the family search records as the burial of William Cobley, Wilshire, England, 23 March, 1562, batch number. Um, there is a list of the batch numbers that uh, the SCA finds uh, good. In other words, the information in it is, uh, uh, hasn't been changed, isn't uh, copies of copies. Um, if you're looking to find out what batches are good and what are not, uh, you can uh, look on the SCA website. There is an article about it, and I believe there's also uh, a cover letter. But I'm not going to go into that right now. Just to know that you need name, possibly the gender, the event, the date, the batch number, and then the URL. And you don't need 
three, four, five different sites unless you're trying to um, register something different. One site is perfectly fine for uh, for family search. Okay. Um, just quickly interrupting, can you see the sure. chat window? No, no? I, I cool. I, <laughs> I mean, not cool, but um, so yeah, there are I'm, questions I'm trying for to find you. it, and it doesn't. All right. So, if there are questions, let's let's pause for a moment. Yep. Um, so, first things first, you have half an hour. Okay. Um, that's I know very uh, self-centered of me, uh, okay. but there is a question about what um, what about items without a batch number, but with available to all photos of the original item. Okay. Um, in the handout. It does say uh, that if you have an item that doesn't have a batch number and, and Family Search has changed things in the last uh, year or so, they've gotten rid of batches in, in, in several areas. Um, if an item does have an image and it looks like it's an image actually from the period, not a copy made later on, uh, where it's been typed in and it says it's from 1560, uh, but the page uh, has something that says like 1900 on it. Um, if it has a good image, you can include the image with the item and let people who can uh, read the period handwriting uh, look at it to do a little more verification. Um, try to use the items that have batch numbers, but if you're looking for specific spelling and you have uh, an item with an image, include the image and then just say, you know, see image attached uh, to, this, uh, to this citation. Okay, does that answer question? Yes? Yep. Okay. Yep. That's good. Okay. So now that we've talked about the different types of uh, citations from books, from websites, uh, from family search, um, how about some practice? We've got about a half an hour. We can practice a few things. And I guess for this, um, we can do either by raise your hand and you can unmute and talk. Um, since I can't seem to see the, uh, the chat window, uh, is everybody okay with that? I suppose, sure, yeah, okay. Okay, all right, so. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up um, four different practice names uh, where the documentation has been written down, but it's not quite what we talked about for a summary. So let's see if we can maybe make a better summary. Okay. So we have client wants the name Andromeda Spartiates. And this is what was sent in. So what was done well with this, uh, with this documentation? Um, they do give both name elements um, in both the uh, English spelling and the original, um, uh, the okay. original uh, Greek. Okay. Um, what needs improvement? <laughs> what would you, uh, what would you add or change? Based on what we were talking about with uh, with the, with uh, summaries. A date on the patronymic. Mm -hmm. We need, we definitely um, need a date there if we can. Name and author and the name of, of the first book. citation. 
Um, little and Scott is is Latin, isn't it? I'm not sure whether that gives us a good point. I don't. I don't know. It's uh, you know somebody somebody cited this. Is it a book? We don't know. <laughs> Um, it's on the uh, Appendix H. Okay. So we know it's from the no photocopy list. Mm hmm But how would you write up uh, that element better? And that was, uh, that was Hervius? I, we need to know what Little and Scott say about the name. Mm -hmm. Okay, Need, needs to mean the Spartan. Is this a by name? This is a name. Yeah. So we don't um, know. So, so, say um, so it's got to be. If it's a by name, it's got to say. Spartiatus is a by name, meaning maybe the Spartan. Yeah. Does that sound like it would be a little better? That sure. would be an improvement. I mean, okay. Needs to mean the Spartan. I mean, you have to show it was a name. Well, it's got as a dictionary. Ah. So maybe this is a this is a bad site to begin with. Uh, it is one of those dictionaries that includes uh, name references, though. Yeah. Okay. So it may be workable. But it would definitely have to be a little bit more rewritten to give more information. Okay. Also, I was thinking that, you know, Andromeda, we don't know if that's a human woman or a, um, or a goddess because, you know, we're not supposed to have names that were exclusively gods and goddesses here. We have to show that it was a real human. And since I haven't seen this um, classics at Oxford, um, yeah. Website. Yeah, this is it. Yeah, it gives it. It gives it a website. Um, so we'd have to follow the website and figure out: is this a website that we know? What does it actually say about the name? Um, you can tell so, I do this a lot because I immediately recognize that as the LGB, LGPN, which is uh, mm -hmm. lexicon of Greek personal names, which only has the names of real humans in it. Okay. okay, I did not know that. All right, well. Well, Pelican Queen of Arms. I get paid yeah. the big bucks to know this. Yep. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I mean, if you're, if you're, if you're a consulting oh. herald and you're looking at oh, this. Wrong. The Appendix H, Little and Scott is their Greek, in, Greek English lexicon, not the Latin ah. one. Okay. No, this, okay, never mind. Yeah, I made a mistake. Okay. 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 So. All right. So how does, how does a corrected citation look for, say, Andromeda? What, um, what, what would you say to make it a, a better summary? Everybody. Anybody? Let's state the site. Okay. Not just put the URL. Mm -hmm. If if you spell out the uh, lexicon of Greek personal names and use all spell the out, words, spell out the website, tell from, tell where it's coming from. Email personal name found at lexicon of Greek personal names, dated to two hundred, and the URL, and that pretty much covers it. Well, is that two hundred? CE or BCE? Because we're dealing with classical Greek here. True. True. So you'd have to you'd have to give uh, some some better time frame. Okay. So anybody ready for the next one? Should we try another one? Sure. Okay. 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 Harold Lebedel. So we have the two elements. We have Harold and Lebedel with just 
the URLs. And then the SCA says you can combine French and English names. Yeah, but so no. Is there anything was done well with this? Okay, so the first name they have, if you just look at the first name, they uh -huh. have actually documented that individual name element not terribly. As a combination, it's terrible. <laughs> Well, as a combination, oh, that even that's, that's more than I mean, three hundred years apart. You can't do that. Submit, sub, submitters, you know, want what they want. Um, but how would you improve uh, the written summary? What what could you add or change to make it an easier summary to understand? One thing I would do, since you're citing Harold as a king, I would note that he was never known by that name. Okay. Uh, Jean Marie uh, Caid. Sorry. Oh, oh that's Weren't all right. There kings of England named Harold before uh, the Norman Conquest? There were a few, I think. Yeah. So why would you cite a king of Denmark if you want to combine an English and a French name? I, who knows? Exactly. But that would be my point. Okay. I would um, it actually is in England, say, but... Hmm? Sorry? Okay. Oh, I'm looking at the source because, uh, again, this um, it's an Anglo-Saxon name based on the source, but that, again, you have to know the URL, which a lot of uh, commenters don't know. Mm -hmm. So, I would give a better description of what the source was than just the URL. Yep. Uh, anytime you're looking at a website, you want to tell the name of the website, um, a date for the name element, and uh, you want to try and make sure that the name itself has not been changed or modernized in any way. Um, Again, uh, what you see here is a uh, incomplete summary and it can hold things up uh, when you're trying to get a name uh, either entered into Oscar or um, looked at by commenters. So. Well, there's more than 300 years between the two elements. Mm -hmm. If you're mixing, English and French, they have to be within 300 years. Mm -hmm. Yep. So you would really have to redocument one or the other piece. Mm -hmm. And this is a case where you might, as a consulting herald, want to talk to the submitter and uh, rework the summaries that, uh, that have been given. Well, you so. remember, you don't need the submitter's permission to rework a summary. So, you need the um, permission to change something, but just to improve but the just documentation. To, yeah, just um, just to improve the documentation, you can certainly you know do that before it gets sent in, or if you're a submissions herald, you can certainly rewrite oh, a summary. So, anybody up for one or two more? Try again. Okay. So here's another one. Duna no Kori. And then we have man's name from Ireland with a website. And then the Okori. So what was done well here? Very little. <laughs> We, we have said um, things about the given name, and we told you where to find it. We could have said a bit more about the site and exactly what it said, but I'm not sure. You know, really, we just needed to flesh out the site a bit. And that was done reasonably well. Okay. Now, what about the by name? Um, who is Wolf as an Okora? 
and where does he say that this is in the Elizabethan era name? Okay. Um, this is a case of knowing that Wolf is one of the Appendix H uh, okay. books. And SN, again, as I said, is, uh, is short for subnominee, which is uh, a way to refer to where the name appears and how it appears in the book. Um, there are several versions of different books on that Appendix H list. Uh, page numbers can sometimes be different across editions. So if you're uh, looking for something, uh, citing the actual name and uh, how it appears in the book is, is sometimes easier to find rather than a page. That by name also um, is lacking some actual dates to see how far it meets with the date in the given name. Mm -hmm. Yep. So they're even, the whole, even though 10, they're 70. even though they're both uh, even though they're both Irish names, because Wolf uh, documented Irish names, um, they are a little far apart. So this is another case of um, maybe you want to look for uh, something that's a little closer in time, and again talk to the submitter uh, to make a better summary. Leo Cora and Elora different spellings too. Uh, doesn't there's no explanation of why there's two different spellings. Mm -hmm. So you'd wanna you'd wanna put something about why uh, one of the spellings is what you want and one of the spellings is how it appears in the book. Lily, you're at fifteen minutes. Okay, we have one more example. So Client doesn't have a clue. They worked on Armory. Legal name and branch allowance. So, wow. quickly write down legal name, where they are, Nithgard. That's actually almost enough if they were to include their actual ID. Mm -hmm. They'd have to and say whether actually... Nithgard was their first, middle, or last name. You have to know which part, which part of the name it is. Which part of the name it is, um, and the fact that there's uh, proof of this is the legal name included in in documentation. Um, and with regard to using a branch name, you want to cite uh, the name as it appears uh, in the register. Uh, to, what, to what kingdom it was registered and the date that it was registered to that kingdom. Um, it's a very uh, quick and easy way to get a name, um, but you still have to write out uh, a little bit more than legal name and branch name. So, okay. Um, All right, so I think we have done at least a little bit of practice, and I've included in the handout um, a little bit more information that you can peruse at your leisure. You can contact me uh, if you have any uh, questions about that, but we have a little bit more time. Uh, if we have any questions or anything we want to talk about with regard to this subject, Now's the time. Does anybody have any questions? And I'm going to stop the share of my screen. There we go. Uh, and now I is, can see. There is one question, which is where do we find the handouts? And I can answer that one if you'd like. Yep. If <laughs> if you if you would put up the 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 URL for that. Yep. Um, other than that, I'm not sure I see any other questions, but I am sure they will filter in. Okay. I had a question. How do you determine if a source is modernized? Okay. Um, 
with regard to uh, known uh, books from the uh, Appendix H handout, um, we've talked a little bit about uh, how Rini and Wilson, you need to look for the italicized given names um, if you're looking for um, a, a non-modernized version, they modernize the given names, but not the, uh, the surnames. Um, you really just have to, uh, when you're talking about summarizing for, um, for the form, um, you're not really talking about uh, knowing particularly whether a source is good or not. You're hoping that a source is good. Um, but uh, if a source is like a book published in period, like I said, or uh, a known uh, Appendix H uh, item, or it, it has dates, uh, dates in it, write it up and send it in. Um, commenters in Oscar and other people uh, can look at it and say more or less about it. Um, what you as a, as a consulting herald want to do is you want to put as uh, succinct and easily understood summary on the form as possible. Or if you're a submissions herald and you get uh, something that has just, you know, like the bits and pieces in the practice like we just did, uh, you want to rewrite the summary to make it a little easier to understand uh, when the item goes into Oscar. Does that Does that answer uh, the question? Sort of. Sort of. Uh, okay. one, of the, one of the ways to tell if a source modernizes spellings is to look in the source itself. Usually most history books will have a translation convention notes. Read the article. Sorry, I'm beeping at you read the article that uh, the header discussion of the article, which will tell you what it's done in terms of transcriptions. And Mistress Alice puts it better than I could right now. Thank you. Any other questions? Um, one quick question here. And I see Patricia. Yeah, um, some of my clients over the years or a couple of them have just said well you know this first name it's in the bible you know because i want to be solomon or i want to be noah or something like that how do you okay. cite that do you have to pro go prove that well solomon's not just a name in the bible but it was used you know in the middle ages by particular people or okay citing the bible um Best way to do that is look for a Bible that was printed within period. And there are at least a few uh, out there in uh, ebook, Google book land. If you can find uh, a Bible printed in period that has the name spelled the way that you want it uh, within, within that, you're fine. But that only works for some cultures where there's a pattern of using biblical names, which didn't mm. happen in every culture. So you're really much better off going and finding that name in an article in the specific culture. There's a sneaky backdoor research method, www.morsulus, M O R S U L U S dot org has a search function that will search all the major articles on heraldry.org 
for mm -hmm. a specific name. So yeah. it's and in the Bible. Gets you pretty far in English because Puritans, but it doesn't get you anywhere in, say, Swedish. Or Italian or German. Or uh, Italian. Russian. Um, but uh, finding, uh, finding a period published Bible is one way. Uh, Mistress Alice said, obviously, Morseless. Um, just as a, a note on the Morseless site, um, there are uh, several entry areas if you haven't ever used it before. Um, and for some web browsers, you're not going to see all of the bits unless you scroll. What you're looking for is the green surround box sort of at the end of that first page on the Morseless site. <laughs> that's where you're going to put the information in and uh, that's where the uh, search function would be for names. Okay. Four minutes. Five. Okay. Uh, okay. So maybe we have time for one more question. Anybody? Okay. All right. Well, thank you for all for attending. I hope that I've provided information that uh, that is useful for you. And again, if you need to find me, uh, I'm going to put my email in. And if anybody has any other questions, they can find me via email. So thank you all for attending. And again, I hope this was informative for you.